Joe Stan. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Joshua Steinle. I moved here to Hong Kong with my family one year ago. We've been living here for one year. We're absolutely loving it. And I'm so excited that you're here with me today because I'm excited to share with you some of the things I've learned as I've been on a quest to decide how I am going to educate my children. These are my kids. They're six and four years old. They're sitting here backstage right now. Like you, if you're a parent, or you're going to be a parent someday, I care deeply about the education of my children. I want them to receive the absolute best education that they can possibly receive. And after considering all the alternatives, my wife and I have decided that we are going to homeschool our children. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, isn't homeschooling illegal in Hong Kong? <laughs> this would be a really bad place to uh, be announcing this if it were. <laughs> no, homeschooling actually is not illegal in Hong Kong, although many people think so. But it is illegal in some other countries. Perhaps most notably, Hitler outlawed homeschooling in Germany in 1938, and that law has never been repealed. Germany has repealed most of the laws Hitler passed, but not that one. If you homeschool in Germany, you can expect to be fined, and you're under the constant threat that the government might come and take your children away from you. So, homeschooling, I believe, is the future of innovative education. And a lot of people these days are very interested in homeschooling. In the United States, there are two million U.S. families who homeschool their children. And they do it with technology-driven programs like Khan Academy, Coursera. Universities like Harvard, Stanford, and MIT film their lectures and put these lectures online for free for anybody to watch. If you want a world-class education, all you need is an internet connection. Now, this is the standard model of education that was created about 150 years ago. It was imported to the United States by the Prussians. It spread worldwide. And this traditional classroom with a teacher, desks, people segregated by age, has become the standard for all of us that we recognize. And it hasn't changed all that much in the last 150 years. This system is fundamentally outdated. And no matter how much money we pour into it, it can't be fixed. Now, before I go any further, I want to be very clear. Nothing I say today is an attack on teachers or administrators or people involved in this system. My mother was a public school teacher. I love teachers, but I'm not a huge fan of the system that we've had in place for all these years. I think that homeschooling is going to become part of the future of education, a large part of it, due to five trends that we're seeing in the world today. The first trend is that more parents are starting to work from home, telecommuting via the internet, this is a trend that is going to continue, and more and more parents will see that it's an attractive idea to work from home. There's this second trend, which is the demand for individualized, customized education. Parents are demanding this for their children. They don't want a one-size-fits-all approach. The cost of traditional education continues to rise year after year. At the same time, the cost of alternative education is going down while the quality of online courses and other forms of alternative education, that quality continues to go up. The fifth trend I hope we see over the next 10 to 20 years is favorable regulatory changes where governments not only allow homeschooling but encourage it. So, some of the things that people are worried about when it comes to homeschooling are socialization, and also, a lot of parents feel like, hey, homeschooling is interesting, that sounds great. I just don't know if I'm qualified to do it. But let's talk about this social aspect first, because it always gets brought up when homeschooling is discussed. People want their kids to be social. They want them to be able to interact and live in the real world with real people. But this, uh, this idea that homeschooled kids 
do not have opportunities to socialize is a myth, and it's a pretty easy one to bust. Homeschooled kids have opportunities to interact with members of their community. They go to play groups, they go to meetups with friends, they participate in community events, they go to classes, they participate in sports, they go to music lessons, and they have the chance and the time to spend quality time with their families, the fundamental unit of society. So there are three assumptions that I used to make about homeschooling, just like many other people make these assumptions. They're really myths. When I came to understand that these assumptions were myths, it changed my entire perspective on my ability as a parent to teach my children, to give them the best educational opportunities available. So these three assumptions, these three myths that I used to make were myth number one, homeschoolers can't go to top universities. The second myth is that adults educate children. It might sound confusing, I'll explain that in a minute. The third myth is that teachers can educate children better than parents can. So, here's your typical classroom situation. Parents put their children into this situation because they want certain good things for their kids. And they have those assumptions. Of course, adults educate children. Of course, the best place for my child to be is with a trained professional in a school like this. But when you make those assumptions, what do you do? You put your child in school at age three. You make sure that your child has private tutors, that they're studying all the time so they can get into the best secondary school or high school as we call it in the US. And you make sure that you hire expensive admissions consultants so that they can get into those top universities. Sorry. So, <laughs> if you make those assumptions, you look at a parent who says, well, I'm not going to do all that as being a little bit crazy. So, but here is how I looked at these three assumptions and decided that they were myths and found out that the facts are quite the opposite. So fact number one, homeschoolers can go to top universities, even if they don't earn grades. Here's what some of the top university websites say to homeschooled applicants on their websites. Oxford University welcomes applicants from those who have been, or wel welcomes applications from those who have been homeschooled. MIT has a long history of admitting homeschooled students. We do not require a high school diploma or GED from our applicants. Princeton welcomes applications from homeschooled students. Among the homeschooled students admitted in recent years was a student who graduated as valedictorian of the class of 2002. Homeschooling is an educational asset that Harvard considers favorably when making its admissions decisions. So these schools not only are saying that they accept homeschoolers, Harvard says it's actually an asset. They consider it favorably. The second fact, adults cannot educate children. Now what am I saying here? Of course adults educate children, right? They don't teach themselves, do they? Or do they? The one laptop left behind program, or sorry, I'm thinking no child left behind. Uh, the one laptop for every child program is a program that was started to give laptops to children around the world to help them educate themselves. And what they did is in 2012, they took laptops, they found two villages in Ethiopia with children who had never seen written text. They had never even seen a roadside, they had never seen packaging with text on it. They went into these villages where these children were completely illiterate and they put down boxes of laptops. They didn't even open the boxes. They just left them there and wanted to see what these kids would do. And Nicholas Negroponte, the founder of One Laptop Per Child, he says what happened after they gave, gave these children these laptops. He said within four minutes, one kid opened the box, found the on-off switch, and powered it up. This is a kid who's never seen a computer in his life. Within five days, they were using 47 apps per child per day. 
Within two weeks, they were singing ABC songs in the village, and after five months, they had hacked Android. <laughs> so maybe kids do teach themselves. Now, this is one of my favorite quotes. Oliver DeMille, he's the author of a book called The Thomas Jefferson Education. And he says, it is impossible for one human being to educate another. He says that you cannot educate a child, you can only inspire a child to educate himself or herself. We've all seen kids who are smart and intelligent, and yet they don't learn something they're being taught, no matter how much somebody tries to push that knowledge into their heads. No matter how much you try to, try to cram knowledge into somebody's head, they can just ignore it and not learn it. Every woman in this audience who has a boyfriend or husband knows exactly what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> so, if it's not possible for me to force feed education to my children, I have to learn how to inspire them. I have to be a facilitator rather than an educator or a teacher. And parents can facilitate education for their children better than teachers can. Again, this is not an attack on teachers. It's because of the system within which teachers have to work and the more favorable system of a family and a parent educating their child. So this is Ben Swan. Ben Swan is an award-winning investigative journalist. He, got, he was homeschooled. He received his high school diploma when he was 11. He got his bachelor's degree when he was 15. He got his master's degree when he was 16. And so did all nine of his siblings. Same thing, same ages. Other famous people who have been homeschooled include Dr. Francis Collins, the head of the Human Genome Project, Thomas Edison, Mozart, George Washington, 14 other US presidents, including Abraham Lincoln, Albert Einstein, also homeschooled, Charles Dickens, and the founders of the New York Times, Honda, and KFC. <laughs> Clearly, parents can provide amazing educational opportunities for their children. But the question then that arises is, well, yeah, some parents can, but what about me? Do I have to be an amazing parent to provide the kind of experiences that these amazing people had as they were growing up? And that's the great thing, is the answer is no. You don't have to be amazing. Although really, all parents who are trying to be good parents are amazing. But you don't have to be an extraordinary, gifted, talented individual in order to do a good job educating your children as a parent. And the reason why is that children are absolutely unique and parents are the only ones suited to understand the unique needs of their own children. Parents spend more time or can spend more time with their children than anybody else can. And that time matters a lot. Some children learn faster, some ch children learn slower. Some children learn by listening, other children learn by experience. Children learn in all sorts of different ways. But what do we do in the traditional school system? We put 20 or 30 of them in a classroom with a teacher. They all learn the same thing at the same speed. And then at the end of the year, they're gone. They may never speak to that teacher again. They move on to the next classroom. That's the traditional system of schooling. We tinker with it. We try to customize it. But it's difficult within that system to do very much. On the other hand, a homeschooled child, they can start learning and as long as they're interested in something, they never need to stop learning about that topic. They can learn as long as they want to learn. They learn within a family where there are people who are older, younger, people at different stages of development. They learn confidence dealing with different types of people as opposed to only being around people their own age. There is more flexibility in homeschooling to provide real world learning experiences and not just experiences that are created in a textbook. So, it takes about 18,000 hours to earn a PhD. A full-time parent will spend 18,000 waking hours with her child by the time that child is three years old. Remember, 
nobody else has a PhD in raising your child. You are the expert on your child. Nobody else can take your place. My wife and I decided to homeschool because we feel it is the best education we can provide for our children. We're excited to learn with them. And I would invite you to look into homeschooling, to explore it. It's not the right fit for everybody, but it might be the right fit for you. And if I can do it, I know that you can do it as well. It does take sacrifice. It is hard, but children are worth it. Thank you.